Now, why would we pay somebody only $4 an hour? They're not very valuable to the marketplace. Now, we've got to make that distinction to the marketplace. Might be a valuable brother, a valuable member of the community, a valuable member of the church, valuable member in the sight of God, to the human family, of course, those kind of values. But to the marketplace, which is called what? Reality. Reality is, if you're not very valuable, you don't get much money. Those are called the facts. <laughs> I mean, that's how that is. Well, then how do you get more money? Simple answer. Somebody says, well, I'll go on strike for more. Well, here's a major problem with that. Here's a major problem with that. You can't get rich by demand. Somebody says, well, I'm waiting for a raise. I'm telling you it's easier to climb than to wait for a raise. Why not just become more valuable rather than wait? I'm telling you that's the key to all good things. Becoming more valuable. Why would we pay somebody $400 an hour? They've become more valuable to the marketplace. See how this works? I'm telling you, this stuff is so easy. This is America. This is a ladder. <laughs> how far is it from four to five? I'm telling you, it's not far. Four to five dollars an hour? If you work for McDonald's, haul out the trash, they'll pay you five dollars an hour. If you whistle while you haul out the trash, they'll pay you five dollars an hour. I'm telling you. You'll get an extra dollar just for a good attitude. Yay, McDonald's. Wear the hat. <laughs> Incredible. Five dollars. And then you just keep becoming more valuable, more valuable, more valuable. I got a telephone call five years ago. Company said, we're ready to expand internationally. We need some help. I was sort of semi-retired. Right? Looking for the next exotic beach. They said, no, no, Mr. Rohn. We got a project for you. Right? Going to expand internationally. We could use your help. Next little while, we'll add some millions to your fortune, make it worth your while. I said, okay. I thought later, isn't that interesting that they called me? My second thought was, of course they'd call me. Who else would they call? I mean, you know, <laughs> I can get the job done. Now, how come, how come I got a telephone call worth millions? I had become valuable. Now, I'm a farm boy from Idaho. I was raised in obscurity. One year of college, and I thought I was thoroughly educated. Made all kinds of mistakes galore. At age 25, the creditors are calling me saying, hey, you told us the check was in the mail. I got pennies in my pocket. I got nothing in the bank. I'm behind on my promises. How come I get a telephone call five years ago and it's worth millions? I changed. I changed. I turned my life around. Is it possible to become worth millions? Speaking economically, now there's a lot of values to become, but let's just talk economics. Is it possible to become that valuable? And the answer is... Of course, of course. Now, let me give you the secret. Shelf said, here's the secret, Mr. Rohn. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Once I got that, it turned my life around. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Results. Every once in a while, you've got to take a measure. See how you're doing with these three pieces. Philosophy, attitude, activity. Now we take a measure called results. What is the results at the end of the day, the results at the end of the week? You can't let too much time go by without checking. When time goes by, six years I'd been out there working when I met my teacher, Mr. Schilf. Schilf said, well, Mr. Rohn, let's just go through a little summary here. He said, in the last six years, how much money have you saved and invested? Let's go through a little tab list here. How much money have you saved and invested the last six years? I said, what? Zero. He said, you have messed up. You remember these notes. I like that. You've messed up. He said, who sold you on that plan? I thought, my gosh, the man's right. I'm a nice guy. I bought the wrong plan. What if you were 50 and broke? Right? Didn't need to change countries.
bought the wrong plan. What a sad scenario that would be. But Shelf said these questions. Let's go through some results. He said, how many books have you read in the last 90 days? I said, what? Zero. Wisdom of the world available? Change your life, change your future. Wisdom of the world available? Develop, develop any skill you want, earn the kind of income you want, have all the treasures you want, equities you want, relationship with your family that you want, everything that you want available, and the wisdom of the world to help you get it. Haven't read any books in the last 90 days. My teacher said, Mr. Rohn, you have messed up. I'm telling you, you've got the deal. Shelf said, Mr. Rohn, in the last six months, how many classes have you taken to improve your skills or to develop new skills? Go for the American dream. Become rich and powerful and sophisticated and healthy and influential. How many classes have you taken in the last six months? I said, how many? Zero. He said, you have messed up. He said, you don't need to unmess the country. You don't need to straighten out the perplexed. You don't need to straighten out any of this stuff. All you've got to do is look within and let results teach you a great deal about your own activity, your own attitude, and your own philosophy. I went through that process. Take this phrase home. Results is the name of the game. What other game is there? Results. Here's all life asks us to do. Make measurable progress in reasonable time. Just take home that little phrase. Good phrase. We're asked in life simply to make measurable progress in reasonable time. We demand it of our children. How many years do you want your child to spend in fourth grade? <laughs> Approximately. <laughs> About one. If it looks like they're not going to make it, we pour on the pressure. Call legitimate pressure. Lack of results. Peer pressure, family pressure, school pressure, community pressure. Every other kind of pressure we can bring to bear. Why? You can't stay more than one year in fourth grade. As parents, you'd have to leave the community. You say, well, what if they're nice kids? Wouldn't you give them three or four years? And the answer is no. You've got to make better progress than that. So you've got to check fairly often. Some things you've got to check every day. Some things you've got to check at least by the end of the week. Salesman joins this little sales company. He's supposed to make 10 calls first week. Wouldn't it be legitimate to call him in on Friday and say, John, what? How many calls? I mean, this stuff is simple. John says, well, say, John, well won't fit in this little box here. Well. <laughs> now John starts with a story. You say, John, I made this little box so small so a story won't fit. <laughs> I don't need a story. I need what? A number. A number. What will a number tell me? everything. John's supposed to make 10 calls. What if he made 20? You say, wow, wow, we got somebody. What if he only made one call? Whoa. <laughs> Will that tell us something about John's philosophy? And the answer is yes. Will it tell us something about his attitude? Of course. Will it tell us something about his disciplines? Of course. And if he wants... A lesson in life change. All he has to do is be willing to face the numbers and come up with the results that will teach you to either celebrate if you got good results or fix whatever needs to be fixed in your philosophy, attitude, activity called disciplines. You don't need to go anywhere else. I do believe in affirmations. And they are valuable as long as you affirm the truth. Because it says in ancient scripts, the truth will set you free. Free to do what? Amend your errors and pick up new disciplines. That's what the truth is for, to help us amend our errors and pick up the disciplines for life change. That's what the truth is for. So I do believe in affirming the truth. If you're broke, best thing to affirm is, I am broke. You put that up on the refrigerator where you can see it every day. I mean, that's how you do that. <laughs> Now, if you need a little additional affirmation, you just put up there, I'm 40 and broke. I mean, you know, that ought to do it. And if you need just a little more, put up there, I live in America and I'm 40 and broke. That's enough to turn your life around. It says, hey, something is 
wrong. Somewhere I have messed up. Now I'm telling you, if you'll start with that, it's called the process of life change, and it doesn't matter how small the process is to start. One discipline starts it, and then one discipline feeds another, feeds another, and the first thing you know, you've got this whole cycle in an upward positive motion, and it's called life change. It's called income change. It's called health change. Relationship with your family change. Equities unprecedented that you can have in numbers that will stagger the imagination if you do not curse what's available and start amending what's possible to get the results that you want. I don't think I can put it in any better language. Let me give you the day that turns your life around as quickly as I can. I got four parts to the day that turns your life around and then we're finished for the day. Number one, disgust. Disgust. Disgust is a negative emotion, but it can have a very positive, powerful effect. Disgust says, I've had it. What an important day that could be. I've had it. I met a beautiful, powerful, accomplished executive lady in New York. The company invited me to come in. This lady was a vice president, an extraordinary lady. I got to know her and I, I found out her story. I said, how did you get here? Big income. And she never went, to high, never went to college, never went to university. I said, how did you get here? Executive, powerful, income. She said, well, let me tell you part of the scenario. She said, when I was a young mother a few years ago, she said, one day I asked my husband for $10. And he said, what for? She said, before that day was over, I decided I would never, ever ask again. She said, I started studying opportunity, found it, took the classes, put myself through the schools, did the scenario. Now I'm vice president, I make a lot of money. And she said, I kept my promise. I've never, ever had to ask again. It's called a life-changing day. The day you say enough is enough. Now, if you can add an act to your disgust, it helps. A man takes a shotgun to his car. Blows out every window, destroys every tire, puts a hundred rounds in it and says, I've driven this embarrassing thing for the last time. <laughs> and then he saves it. He saves it. And later when somebody says, how did you become rich and powerful? He says, let me show you this car. <laughs> One day I'd had it up to here, I blew it to smithereens. Enough is enough. Here's the last three. Next is decision. Decision making is a life changing day. If you went home today and in the next few days cleaned up a list of decisions, it could furnish enough inspiration for the next five years, 10 years. What an inspiring day, the day you can bring yourself to decide. And here's the third one, desire, wanting too bad enough. Who knows the mystery of that? We don't know. But here's something I do know. Sometimes desire waits for a trigger waits for something to happen. Who knows what the happening may be? A song, the lyrics, a movie, the dialogue, a seminar, a sermon, a book, an experience, confrontation with an enemy, a conversation with a friend who finally levels with you. Whatever the experience it is, it's so valuable. And here's my best advice. Welcome all experiences. You never know which one is going to turn everything on. Don't put up the walls. The same wall that keeps out disappointment keeps out happiness. Take down the walls. Go for the experience. Let it teach you. And here's the last one. Resolve. Resolve says I will. Two of the most powerful words in the language. Benjamin Disraeli said, nothing can resist a human will that will stake its existence on its purpose. Shortly put, I'll do it or die. 
Best definition of resolve I got from a little junior high girl, Foster City, California. I'm going through some words one day. I got to this one and I asked the kids, who can tell me what resolve means? Some didn't know, some tried. Interesting. The last one was the best. Little girl about three rows back, she said, I think I know Mr. Owen. I said, what? She said, I think resolve means promising yourself you will never give up. I said, that's the best I've ever heard. She's probably giving seminars somewhere today, right? I mean, that's the <laughs> best I've heard. I asked the kids, how long should a baby try to learn how to walk? How long would you give your average baby? Before you say, hey, enough, enough, no. Any mother in the world would say, you're crazy. My baby is going to keep trying what? Until, what a magic word. I want you to write it down. Until, promise yourself you'll read the books until your skills change. You'll go to seminars until you get a handle on it. You'll listen to it until it makes sense. You'll go for it until you understand it. You'll practice it until you develop the skill. Never give up until, however long that is. Step by step, piece by piece, book by book, word by word, apple by apple. Walk around the block, walk around the block. Go for it. Don't miss the chance to grow and resolve that you'll pay the price until you learn, change, grow, become. Then you'll discover some of life's best treasures when you pay that price.